Thank you, Michelle. You are a wonderful advocate. You are a wonderful advocate. You'd better come and advocate the opera, advocate the opera for us, too. Um, we're very proud of this association. It is kind of self-evident. Opera Australia, which is your national opera company, uh, has supported a number of charities uh, over its 56 years of existence, and we're always being requested to support more, and we're proud to do it. We're a not-for-profit ourselves, and we depend on the largesse um, and the enlightenment, really, of the society in which we live. So, so we are more than sympathetic uh, with what uh, not-for-profit organisations have to do. But we chose, um, in a very considered way, this partnership with asthma because, as Michelle said, um, singing is all about the breath. And there are a number of um, singers, as I suppose there are athletes and swimmers, who came uh, to discover their voice because they were dealing with an asthmatic condition of varying, varying degrees of severity. And, and there have been wonderful examples uh, of it in the opera company. So it's actually uh, it's an association that is, that is um, highly respected by our artists themselves, which is a nice thing to do. But I also think the idea of two not-for-profits in very different areas working together for mutual benefit is, is a very positive thing for our society. And when I look at the work that not-for-profits and charities do uh, in our, hopefully, <laughs> civilised society, they just provide the glue, I think, uh, that binds people together. So we have come to appreciate um, the work of, of the Foundation a lot over the past eight years increasingly and become increasingly proud of this association. So thank you. Thank you for your partnership. Um, Lab OM, I don't have to talk about. Uh, most people know Lab OM. And for those of you who may be seeing it for the first time, I envy you the chance to see Lab OM for the first time. Uh, it's a very important opera to a repertory opera company. We, we put on about 21 productions a year between Sydney and uh, Melbourne, and next year we go to Brisbane. Uh, we also do regional tours and all that. But, but, so we give about 260 performances a year. But La Boheme is one of those five or six absolute touchstone operas which are at the core of any repertory opera company. So it's very important that you not only have La Boheme, but that you have a beautiful and successful La Boheme uh, for two reasons. One is it kind of drives the box office that pays for so much else, and it's very popular for one very good reason. It's a masterpiece. But the other thing it does is actually bring new audiences into the theatre. You know, we have lots of clever ways of marketing to young audiences, new audiences, unsuspecting audiences we sneak up on. But fundamental are operas like La Traviata, La Boheme, Madame Butterfly, Marriage of Figaro. These are the things that people who want to experiment with opera who may not have been introduced to it, this is where they take the plunge. So I always say when we're doing a new La Boheme, and yes, of course it's important for the commerce of the company, but it's very important if you're serious about building new audiences and engaging new audiences in the future. This production is taken out of um, Bohemian Paris and set between the wars in um, Berlin. Uh, and I think it is a very, very uh, clever and thoughtful um, repositioning of the opera. It allows all the beauty and slight decadence that you need for La Boheme, which is a hugely romantic story. But it is a society where someone like Mimi can have TB, and most people won't notice, <laughs> won't lend a hand, won't do what the Asthma Foundation does. And it was this particular time in German history, of course, between the wars, which was both very exotic very decadent, uh, and Gail Edwards, the director, takes advantage of that, as you will see in a couple of the big scenes in La Boheme. They're really beautiful and colourful, but they also have a point. Um, you'll, you'll be seeing many wonderful singers tonight. I hope you agree at the end of it, uh, particularly to Keisha Mesha Kizart, who is singing uh, the role of Mimi. The last Boheme she did was a month ago at the Met. Uh, we thought she was a great one of our best kept secrets. She came and did Tosca for us about two or three years ago. Uh, she hails from Chicago in the United States. Uh, and we've actually asked her to come back two or three times over the next three or four years. So if you like her, you'll be seeing a lot more of her. But of course, since then, the world has discovered her. She's made her Metropolitan debut. She's going to Covent Garden. You are seeing uh, a still relatively young soprano. Well, a young soprano, but she is knocking on the door of greatness. It is just such a beautiful voice. But the whole cast is wonderful. So enough from me. Uh, what I hope for you this evening 
is that uh, you have a wonderful time, that Bohem does its magic and you are transported, and thank you for supporting our partners. It's wonderful to welcome you here.